Hello, ladies and gentlemen. This is Hugh Martyr checking in with a episode, special episode on my personal adventures with the Metro bus. But before I address that, of course, um, I'd like to address the topic that apparently 42% of my viewers who watch my videos are not subscribed. This is a travesty. How can you watch any one of my videos and not subscribe? It's impossible. There's no reason not to subscribe to me if you watch my videos. They're all the same. There's nothing you disagree with. You only don't subscribe to somebody if you only like some of their videos and mostly they do other content. But what I do is talk all the time. So if you watch my videos, there is no reason to foots around with me like this. No footsing. No footsing allowed. Let me see. Huh. Huh. Um, I can't stay here for long. Okay, so. I need to think of my, uh, route. And that is difficult because right now I'm talking to you guys. Let me see. I don't want to go the normal way. That's the thing. I want to... Okay. So if I trace my steps, what heck? having trouble figuring out which way I'm going to go because I went to go a certain way but I'm not sure how to get there no that's a lie I do know how to get there I was lying to you this entire time um I just haven't gone there in a while uh anyway the bus okay so here's the jiffy I um I was going in middle school, uh, my mother decided that the drive to the middle school I went to, Western Academy, was very long, and in fact it was. So she thought about making us take the bus, and eventually she did, after she scoped out the bus for a while. Uh, the bus route was bus 26, um, bus route 26, um, and it was, uh, we never, we were never unsafe on the bus. This is a fact. We didn't have no really bad experiences on the bus. None of these. Hello? Hello? Okay. It was not obvious that you were going to stop. Um, dumpling. So she made us. made us ride the bus and um let me set some ground knowledges about the bus first of all oh don't do that I'm sorry I'm eating dinner as a go um anyway uh the bus fact is, uh, the bus is not a very good vehicle. So, if you have ever seen a metro bus, it's a huge old thing. It's, uh, when you step in, there are two levels, because they, uh, the engine is huge, and so to build around the engine, they made it so that you just go up onto a elevated level of the bus, and then the roof is, re the, uh, roof is really high so um it's a big old machine and it has three sets of wheels and the fact is uh with a engine like that uh you press down that on the accelerator and nothing happens for like a, a second and then you sort of lurch forward and if you get momentum that's really good but stopping is really bad and specifically the suspension was terrible. 
while you were inside the bus, you felt like you were in like a big old like um rectangular prism and um that was hooked up by harness to a larger rectangular prism and the larger rectangular prism is the one that had the wheels and uh the larger rectangular prism prism had no troubles at all moving like it would just drive and that was it that's how you drive um but whenever it would stop uh, the smaller rectangular prism, that's us, would lurch forward and, like, shake for a little bit, and bumps were terrible. It didn't help that, um, our bus route was a particularly bumpy one. Frankly, it was pretty bumpy, yeah. Um, and, um, one of the things we did to, uh, try and fight this is, um, we would try to lean against the things, and that was pretty effective, actually. Um, second part, the seats, they're metal with carpeting. You are sitting on a carpet with some metal. So if you want to relax or go to sleep, you must be pretty conked out. That being said, I did see a lot of people conked out on the bus. Dumplings. Uh. There we go. So then, gentlemen, um, the seats, the seats are terrible. All the time, always. They were really, really uh, abusive seats to sit on. This is just a fact. Um, third, third thing. The uh, the drivers were not very satisfied people. They weren't very observant and they weren't very satisfied. For example, I don't mind telling you that I owe the government nearly a hundred dollars in bus fees that I never actually paid. Because it, um, you have a little bus card and you can charge that uh, with, um, and you can charge that either uh, with, by sending it bank, bank, your money to it with your bank account, or there's a machine in every bus where you can put in money and your card and it'll put the money in your card. Um, and what you can do is you can pretend you're gonna go put some money in your card so you can pay for this, or and then you don't pay at all. Um, we also got a discounted cost as students, which was great. Um, hmm. I think I'm taking a really long round. And that's bad, because right now I'm late. Don't be like me. I'm a terrible person. I'm a sinner. Mm. We'll see. But they also weren't terrifically nice. Um, like, they were very angry about a lot of things, and, um, if you got too rambunctious in their bus, they would yell at you. So, uh, fourth thing to talk about is, um, before I talk about the passengers, which are truly the main event of the bus, we have to talk about the, um, hey, hey, get over, get over, decisive action! It was taking too long to get over. That is what you do. What what you don't do. What you gotta do is decide some driving and get her done. Uh, unsafe driver right there. The him, not me. So, 
an important thing to remember is that uh, we would get dropped off at Dunkin' Donuts, this stop right by a Dunkin' Donuts, every day. Me and my brother didn't have a lot of pocket money, um, so we wouldn't buy any donuts. But uh, we all eventually we also were getting dropped off with some friends of my brother's. And uh, I will talk about the dynamic between my brother and his friends later. Uh, my brother will remain unnamed because he might go to Th St. Thomas. Maybe. Um, so he will remain unnamed. But he and his friends... Um, anyway. So, uh, and on the way... And on the way back, we would uh, stick at this stop in front of this large road. And um, Robert, my brother and his friends were very rambunctious children. I was not so rambunctious as them. I know that may be hard to believe depending on who you are, but the fact is I wasn't. And they were just big old monsters on the bus about like um, running around and doing their thing and Yelling loud, making jokes and stuff. Um, making jokes and whatnot. And, um, um, and on the way back, when we were waiting for the bus, we would save things from our lunch that we didn't possibly like and toss them out on the road. And carts would come whizzing by at a breakneck speed and absolutely destructify whatever we had put on the road. We would like save mandarin orange tins because <laughs> splat. And um, at one point, one of my brother's friends saved a one of those tubes of applesauce, and he laid that real ginger on the road. And one guy hit it, and it shot all over my brother's friend, which was funny. Very funny. Now, my brothers were general menaces on the bus. They would joke around with their friends very loudly and stuff like that. But I was practically a saint because my mother gave me a Walkman, an old fashioned, well, a new fangled, because there's a difference between them. an old fangled and a new fangled Walkman where you download music onto it, uh, then it can replay it anytime. And, um, I listened to my music and I stared out the window as the bus vibrated from all of the bumps and, uh, all the other passengers, depending on how lucid they were, would, like, angrily stare at my brothers and my brothers would not notice at all, at all. So, um, uh, the passengers. There was one man we would see, frankly, almost every day. He got on at the same stop we did. He was dressed nicely, and he always got off at this stop right outside this gigantic HISD building in Houston, uh, Houston, whatever it is. The HISD is involved with schools and schooling. And so I suppose this man was a teacher of some sort because he always had a big bag full of papers, and a, a leather bag, a big bag full of papers. He was always dressed really nicely. He had like braid hair and he had a dignified air about him. And he was just generally a cool dude. And he would like, and at one point, like there was this drunk guy mm -hmm trying to get on the bus and he fell and he hit the bus and the uh, teacher dude helped him back up. And so he was fairly irregular and he didn't like my brothers because my brothers were idiots. Now, not to say that they aren't still. Anyway, there have been
and lots of um, uh, people on the bus. Mostly, you had about three, two types of people. You either had um, the awake ones, who were the people that were actually awake. This was not everyone, as you may guess. Um, usually, these were very simple looking people who are just, you know, people. Like the teacher, like us, just people, bada bing. Sometimes uh, moms brought their kids on and the kids had like backpacks. There you go. Um, but uh, the other kind are asleep or like not very awake in general. Um, there have been, a, I've seen a lot of asleep people. They're always alone. And there was this one guy who brought his drink onto the bus and it spilled all over the elevated area and dribbled down the stairs. And he woke up and he, uh, and he uh, got up and he slipped on it. And I refrained from laughing at him, but it was hard. Um, and uh, he didn't seem particularly um, sober, if you catch my drift. And I'm not, I'm not sure what he spilled on the ground, but I've never liked it. I've encountered a lot of stains on the bus and I have kept a wide berth of them. Um, then, there are some special cases. Let's start with the impaired. Because everyone starts with the impaired. Um, uh, there was this one woman who was outrageously fat. I mean to tell you that if I ate cheese, whatever, if I, if my main sustenance every day was sticks of butter and I did this for about a week and like ignoring all the heart attacks I would have in that week I would not be as fat as this woman she was outrageously fat if she put her head even slightly less than up her chin would disappear into her the rest of her body and never come out again so she uh suffered from being obese and she had this service dog and uh service dogs are fine it's okay to have a service dog service dogs are fine but this service dog was one of those tiny little dogs of unknown variety that look like they would like nothing better than to die do you know those kind of dogs i know i may sound harsh but those kind of dogs exist. I know it. You might know it. And if you do know it, leave a comment to say to show so to the people who don't know it. Because I don't want to receive my first dislike. I really don't. But the fact was, it was a very nervous, very jittery, jittery dog that was punt worthy. Like I would have kicked that thing if I had the guts. Oh my god. Here you go. Okay. What? What was that sound? Okay. Woo! Decisive driving! I did not blinch. I did not flinch. I did not blanch. I did not flaunch. Launch. It's all easy breezy bacon way from here. Dear God, look at that traffic. Um, so there was that woman. And she would always play those um, paint by numbers games where you drag your finger over the screen and pretend you're actually doing something. Which she wasn't. Then there was this uh, one man. I've never actually seen this man. But he was a uh, seedy looking uh, Spanish man who uh, walked up to my brother, sat near him, but not by him because he knows the rules of pedophilia. And he said, hey, would you like to buy a harmonica? And he pulls out this harmonica that's not of extremely amazing uh, build and brand, but it's a pretty good harmonica. I mean, it's a harmonica, man, what do you want? 
it's a harmonica and it's pretty good for a harmonica and uh, my brother like considers it and he looks into it and it hasn't been used or blown in and it isn't like filled with opium and he asks uh, how much and the guy says $45 which uh, I'm not exactly sure on the exact rates that harmonicas go at but apparently from my brother's uh, perspective this was a fairly crappy uh, crappy um, harmonica especially to, to demand um, $45 for it so he said no and later some other time Two months later. The man comes back. And, um, he said, hey, remember me? Uh, blah, blah, blah. And, um, Robert exchanged some pleasantries with him because he was pretty harmless. And um, he actually succeeded in selling Robert a manatee tie. A uh, tie that was, um, smelled nice, looked nice. It's a tie. And it depicted manatees swimming around in the ocean. And it's actually a pretty fancy tie. And he sold him that for, um, like, 15 bucks. And then he showed him this $10 hammer. A uh, normal hammer of humdrum built and brand. And he said... It's a good hammer. And he hit it on the seat and the head broke off. And he chose this moment to hit the stop button and get off the bus and we have never seen him again. Interesting guy. He will never see this video, but if he does, I'd tell him to comment. And one of my viewers would probably pretend to be him. I did have this very weird, very unpleasant experience with this one man. He was a, uh, he, first of all, he was wearing an, it was like a faded orange. It was not like prison orange, but we'll get to that later. He was wearing, um, a, like, a faded orange shirt and pants. And he had this really dirty white hair. And he was uh, African, and um, he looked kind of out of it. And he had a hospital wristband on. Which initially made me think he had recently escaped from the hospital. However, that's probably not true. He probably doesn't know how to remove it, or maybe he has a special condition and he puts that on and he has that on so that people know what to do with him if he suddenly goes into some sort of shock. But anyway, he's already pretty weird. And he has a tumor behind his ear that's like this, like the size of a, this big, like behind his ear, an orb about this diameter. And um, were behind him for a while because there are no other seats on the bus. And he uh, turns to me because I was closer to him. And uh, he says in a very calm voice, hey, can you help me with something? I can't imitate his voice, so I won't try. He said, hey, can you help me with something? And I'm like, sure, let's be a good Samaritan to this dude. He probably has troubles. Why not help him? So. He hands me this phone, and um, the phone is locked, and also cracked. And he says, can you unlock it? And I actually try a couple of passwords because that's the person I am. And, uh, mm, mm. 
this will be really decisive action if I manage to pull this off. Oh god. I'm sorry. Well, good morning to you too. I need to pay more attention. There's a draw more concentration for me. Because I'm remembering, rather than just speaking. But anyway, he, uh, so it's locked, and I'm like, well, it's locked, and he says, I know it's locked, and I say, do you know the password? And he says, I don't have the password. And I take this to mean that he forgot it. And I said, well, why don't you call, like, the iPhone help desk or take it to an iPhone store, and they'll help you out. And we exchanged terms like this for a while, with him being very, very vague, and my brother was getting considerably worried. And then, I'm like, but it's your phone. And he says, no, it isn't mine. This is not his, this man's phone, but he wants me to unlock it. So, um, then my brother came up with a brilliant ploy of, um, pretending that our mother was calling and getting me on the phone so I could, uh, stop talking to this guy. And I'd like to thank my brother for that because that's a big brain move. Um, and we didn't see that guy again. Um, yeah, so that's the bus. I mean, bus is as bus does, man. Um, this has been a longer video, but I don't regret it because there's just more to, uh, handle. I am just barely on time, which I'm really excited about. And, um, yeah, well, I will see you all in the next video. So remember, subscribe if you're watching, like if you're watching, keep on watching the rest of my videos. If you are watching, um, like, uh, oh, and comment, uh, to give any recommendations or give me any other things you'd like me to do, not do, take into account, drink, that kind of stuff. I do not accept alcoholic beverages at this time. So remember, like, comment, subscribe, have a nice day. Okay, bye-bye. I'm waiting for you to say okay, bye-bye.